What's up, my comic book brothers and my comic book sisters from another mister. So today we're going to do a story arc review of Something is Killing the Children, issue number 26 through 30. And this is about Erica Slaughter being alone and without a prayer, facing a new horrific monster and the Order of the St. George, brought to you by Rated Comics. Now before we get into the content, link in description if you wish to add any of these comic books or other comic books or some of our Rated Comics exclusives to your comic book collection support the art support the industry and also support your comic book collection too time stamps will be in description if you wish to go from issue to issue and also if you're liking the content don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel it'll help rated comics and make more comic book reviews and comic book related content like this now with all that being said let's get into the content before it gets on netflix now if you're watching this by the time this does air on netflix hey i'm glad you're here too we begin this new story arc with Erica Slaughter on the bed, holding her wound, waking up, and she can tell she's in pain and she's not feeling good. Ricky is looking at her asking if she's awake, and Erica Slaughter's like, yeah, and Ricky tells her, well, you passed out in the car, and Erica's like, I figured, so as she gets up, you can tell she's in tremendous pain by that expletive that she lets out. And Ricky tells you, you probably have some bruised ribs, but your arm is stitched up now, and this is because she was fighting the duplicates of type in issue number 25, and that was an epic battle in my personal opinion. So Erica Slaughter's surprised that Ricky stitched her up. You did that? No, my mom, but it's nice work, says Erica. Good, I'll tell my mom. So Erica asks her curiously, like, where are we? And Ricky tells her that you're at my parents' place on the reservation about 30 miles away from the tribulation. Erica asks about the whereabouts of Gabby, and she tells her that her mom is looking after her in the other room. So Erica is relieved that Gabby is safe and nearby. But Ricky's like, yo, we need to talk about what happened back there. Something invisible ripped your arm open and threw you into a wall? And Erica sarcastically responds, it doesn't sound like you need anything explained, huh? I just don't get it. And if you guys follow the channel, or if you guys uh, follow the series, then you'll know that these monsters that Erica battles in the House of Slaughter battles, people like adults cannot see them, but the kids can. The reason why they can is because they manifested that with their imagination. It's a really cool concept, and you could definitely check out all the issues, all the reviews. We covered that on this channel, and this is going to be a Netflix show, and I'm looking forward to it when it comes out on Netflix. So after Erica's response to Ricky, Ricky's like, really? Monsters, that's what you're going to go with? Yeah, I told you. Fucking monsters. And what was that phone call you made in the car talking about the previous issue? And Erica just ignores the question, so to speak. And Erica Slaughter's totem tells her as she's waking up, the Cutter Woman is coming. You've been asleep for hours. She could already be in New Mexico. Yeah, I know, says Erica. And Ricky's like, what? Well, you, you know what? And Erica's like, I wasn't talking to you. You got to help me to get out of here. No, girl, you need some rest. There's no time for that. And Erica knows that her totem is correct. So when Ricky asked her, well, what's wrong? Erica responds with everything's wrong. And that's a great answer to sum, up, sum it all up. So we see Gabby playing card games with Johnny. And she's bored and she hates card games because she wants to play some TV or play some Xbox or something. And Johnny's mom is like, well, we have books. And Gabby's like, ugh. And Johnny's like, yeah, tell me about it, kid. So Ricky comes in, she smokes up a cigarette in deep thought, and she tells the family, I need to run by the bar. I'm going to put up a sign that we're going to be closed for a few days. A few days? And the mom's like, hey, relax, you know, relax, Johnny. And Johnny's like, mom, when has dad ever closed the bar for a few days? Never, not even on his birthday. And Johnny claps back with this sister. You hear that, Ricky? Not even on his birthday that he closes down the bar. And she blows smoke in his face like, yeah, I know. And so the mom is all concerned about Erica. Is she okay? And Ricky's like, she tried getting up, but she needs to sit down and be still for a minute. She's going to sleep a little bit more. I don't want anyone going near her, especially you, Johnny, and especially you, Gabby. Why can't I go in there, says Gabby. I don't trust her. I don't know her. I don't know who she is. And I think she could get all of us in a lot of trouble. Well, then why the hell would you let her lay on your bed and invite her in our house then? <laughs> She doesn't really believe that, I think. I think she's not sure what to believe, so she's making up some cover-up story. So the mom tells Johnny to be quiet, and Johnny's like, hmm, you're thinking some hot shit now that you came back here and could boss us around. Dad should have never left you in charge of that bar. And I'm loving how you get the family tension here, and we get to know a whole lot about Johnny without even delving into it. All she tells him is, hey, Dad should have left you in charge of the bar so you could pour a whiskey from your cell block, right? Enough, sibling. So the mom was pissed. Ricky's like, I'll be back in a couple hours and Johnny just says, well, you're going to see your girlfriend again? Whatever. Yeah. You know, it's going to be boring here. So Johnny's like, I'm going to grab a TV and an Xbox from our place so we can play that zombie game. And Gabby's like, yeah, cool. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Says Johnny. So he leaves. And guess what? 
idle time is the devil's playground. So Gabby's wondering, well, what should I do? You know, should I just sit here? Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to go check out Erica, even though she was advised not to. And when she goes to check up on Erica and she, you know, peeps around the corner without being seen, but she wants to hear the gossip just to make sure, Erica's Oscar type is like, you need to leave. And Erica's like, I could barely stand. Then you won't be able to protect yourself. There's still a lot of work to do, says Erica. And let's not forget about the duplicit type. You don't know how to overpower it, says the totem. So I'm supposed to just let here, stay here, let people die. I'm supposed to just be cool with that. Like, oh, no, it's cool. I'm in pain. Well, what happens when the cutter woman comes to this town? What do you think she'll do to your friends and that girl? Like, the totem is like, yo, you got to get up out of here. I know you're in pain, but you just got to get the hell up. out. This cutter girl is no joke. And Erica is like, I know that. So the totem is like, you can't save them. You can only save yourself. And that's being a little bit selfish. And Erica claps back like, and when has that ever been your party? Because you have a history trying to kill me too. And the totem reminds her that thing, whatever is out there, that duplicate type, is getting stronger with every life it takes. I know. And you cannot fight the Order of St. George and a monster like that at the same time. That monster would take a pack of hunters to trap and kill. And you're just one person. If you stay, you will die. Maybe, says Erica. If you stay, the girl will die at the claws of the monster or the knives of the order. I won't let that happen, says Erica. You can barely stand, says the totem. Oh, F you. So Gabby leaves her room, okay? So back at the bar, Ricky closes the bar. She puts his son out there. We're closed for the next few days. Her phone rings, and it's Sheriff Carter, and she tells Carter she's in the middle of something. And Carter's like, yeah, I know that. I'm in the middle of something myself. We got more bodies in tribulation. He's at the crime scene. And Ricky's like, yeah, more bodies down at the warm water lodge, right? And Carter's like, yeah, that's why I'm calling. There's some security footage of you pulling a blonde lady and Gabby into the car. It looks like she's covered in blood. <laughs> and Ricky right away knows that she fucked up. She's like, yeah, I know. That was me. From the murder scenes to Sheriff Carter, you didn't think of calling the police even though you know the freaking sheriff since we're freaking grade school. What the freak is wrong with you? Look, I'm just trying to make sense of all this, says Ricky, so calm down. No, no, no. I, I don't need you to calm down. I need you to go to the station. I want you to bring Erica Slaughter. I want you to bring that girl and Gabby, and I need you to bring him in an hour. Carter, don't do that tone with me, says Carter. He's pissed. If you don't do this in an hour, I'm going to call the APB on all three of you. One hour. You hear me? And Gabby knows she's in between a rock and a hard place. And all she can say is another expletive. So as Carter's investigating the crime scene, he gets called. And Carter is like, please tell me somebody from the state is here. Well, not exactly, says his colleague. She's definitely not from around here. So he approaches her and you could tell it's Cutter, you know, from the House of Slaughter. And from somewhere, I, I believe, I know it's another country. It's in the previous story arc. You could check that out too. And after they greet, Cutter tries to bring down his wall and charm him. Looks like they do have those handsome cowboys out here in the Wild West, like in those movies, huh? Ma'am, I'm going to need you to tell me who you are. This is an active crime scene. He's not buying it. Okay, well, that's why I'm here. You've been putting calls to the state authorities who floated the case files up to my office in Washington. And Carter's like, Washington, really? And keep in mind, because of the House of Slaughter and their connections, they can intercept things like that to contain the news and control the narrative to how they see fit because they don't want the world knowing that monsters exist like that. So she tells him, yeah, Interpol, the US branch, we had our eyes on this file for a while. I'm sorry, and who are you? And you could tell Carter is putting his hand on his gun. Looks like I ain't buying it. And she's like, my name is Detective Inspector Charlotte Cutter. You could call me Cutter. I hunt monsters and you got a nasty monster right here, boy. And she shows him his badge. Keep in mind, this has a way of building credibility here. I got my credentials, Carter, so take your hand off your gun. So Carter is like, did you say you hunt monsters like he's taking it literally and she does mean it literally but that's one way of diffusing it is exaggerating a little bit like yeah i say monsters but not monsters in the sense of monsters more like monsters in the form of erica slaughter she's a ruthless killer of children she's a monster and i need your help to stop her before she kills again and that's what we end this issue of something is killing the children issue number 26 now obviously not much has happened here and james tinian's one of those writers that just builds up tension definitely an interesting read definitely fun i'm looking forward to this adaptation on netflix when that does happen kind of bummed out that michael flanagan is no longer the director of that show but going back to the comic though i think this is a great start to a new story arc and i'm looking forward to where where this is going to go and how this is going to play out and keep in mind this is your first time here at the channel definitely check out all the other issues of something is killed the children we did cover that in this channel you got some binge watching to do and i'm all for it we begin this issue with Ricky on the hood of her Chevy Silverado truck. I wonder if this is a product placement or something, but hey, 
She gets a call from Sheriff Carter Thomas, and we know it has something to do with the events of the last issue, with her knowing about the whereabouts of Erica Slaughter and Erica and Gabby being at the scene of the crime. Feel free to check that out after this video. Also, check out the playlist at the end of this video if you wish to catch up on the story before it hits Netflix. Now we go into this flashback, and the theme of this flashback is trauma shapes those who experience it. This panel is Ricky remembering her girl from Fernanda who died of cancer. Even though Fernanda brushes the situation off with humor and bluntness, if you will. For example, Ricky says that Fernanda's mom probably hates her because she's lesbian the cancer into Fernanda. Fernanda jokes about that and she jokes that she read something about when you eat poon poon, it gives you cancer. So it's Ricky's fault for eating that poon poon and giving me cancer. <laughs> but the gravity of the deal is still pretty heavy to deal with when Ricky is tearing all up like that. Fernanda's mother did not approve their relationship and her family did not always make good decisions, but she still asked Ricky to look after her sister and her sister's little girl, Gabby. Ricky is now in this because she's trying to keep a promise that she made a while ago. So when Ricky returns home, she tells Gabby that they're going to the police. Gabby jumps to the conclusion that she's being arrested. And Ricky is trying to keep her from being arrested because Sheriff Thomas knows that Gabby and Erica were at the murder scenes from the previous issue. So she intends to bring in Erica as well. So she goes upstairs to find that Erica overheard her. Ricky's voice travels well, I suppose. You know how some people whisper, but it's not really a whisper. It's like, yo, like five other people can hear you with that one person whisper kind of thing. So Erica claims they do not have time for this. The monster gets hungrier and more powerful the more it feeds, and she needs to kill it sooner rather than later. So Erica explains that the monster is bad. It can make itself look like people at first, but it's not very good at it. The shapes are indistinct. They may not have a face or they may have too many arms, kind of like this monster right now, letting us know it's in the beginning phases. It's kind of adapting, but the more they feed, the better at it they get. And before you know it, you don't know if the person you're in the room with is a person or an incredibly dangerous monster. She asks Erica if she knows where the monster is at. Not here and not at the police station, says Erica. So Ricky says she will try to get the sheriff to help and she wants to keep Gabby away from all this, but Erica needs Gabby. The reason is because the monster didn't kill her the first time they met. It means she might be the one who manifested it here. Maybe so, maybe not. And with that, they might have to take a chance that they might be able to lure the monster where they needed to go, which is to Gabby, lure him for a trap. Ricky refuses this, but Erica tells her that the thing is still out there and Gabby will be in harm's way until the monster is dealt with. Ricky asks Erica if she will come to the police station if they agree to help Erica. Erica agrees to do that with that condition. So Erica's totem thinks this is a stupid idea. The Cutter woman is coming and Erica's put all them at risk, especially herself. Despite this being some kind of death wish or something, they leave and go about seeing the sheriff. Although Erica is tough and she is undeniably flawed, I believe that makes a great character. She tries to make the best decision she can, but it's usually in a situation that has no good decision outcome, so to speak. Considering she grew up with the Order of the St. George, she has more compassion than most, but there is no denying that her background was traumatic. You can check out the playlist at the end of this video if you wish to catch up on all that. Like I said, at the end of the video, a brother needs his watch time, but this is a very good story. Now, somewhere nearby, Cutter is on the phone with the sheriff who apparently tells her that Erica is coming in. She requests that he hold her there. Meanwhile, she has a boy tied up and in his swimming pool. She is using him to attract a duplicit type for her own nefarious purposes. Before we go any further, if you like the content we're throwing up so far, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Here at Rated Comics, we do awesome comic book reviews comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway not to mention don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com for some awesome comic books and really good looking rated comics exclusives now we'll get back into the content cutter is one of those villains that will leave you bothered and unsettled in a good kind of way she is cruel and dispassionately sadistic there is nothing about her to like 
But as it is written here, she is very clever and manipulative. She allows the kid to get eaten by the monster. With the monster's blood in a frenzy, it will change into what it fears most. The only thing to bring it harm, and that thing it morphs into is Erica Slaughter as part of Cutter's sadistic and devious plan for Erica Slaughter. And that's where we end this issue of Something is Killing the Children, issue number 27. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. Like I said, I love the slow tension building. Who knows what this clone is going to do? Maybe it's going to go on a killing spree and put it all on Erica that way everyone goes after Erica and so does Cutter while Erica Slaughter is all injured like that it is an amazing story and I can't wait for this to come out on Netflix and not to mention for you collectors out there casual readers hey this comic book is definitely worth adding to your comic book collection begin this issue with Ricky Gabby and Erica Slaughter driving in the car on their way to see Sheriff Carter because Erica's gonna turn herself in but she doesn't want to you know run away from the problems of the monster and Charlotte Cutter going after her and Gabby is confused by all this like you're not running away your octopus said you should be running away but you're not and Erica just tells her like I don't want to have this uncomfortable conversation with you about an octopus but you know what, you shouldn't be listening to the octopus. And curious, Gabby is asking why not? Well, he doesn't like people. He likes when people die because he misses killing people. That's what he was trying to do before, lead you to your death so he can watch. Yeah, says Gabby. Yeah, says Erica. So, okay, Gabby gets more curious. And I wonder if this is a little bit of foreshadowing of maybe Gabby having the potential to be in the next monster slayer or something like that. So she asked Erica, so the octopus, it used to be a monster like the one that killed my family oh yeah but a different kind of monster who did he kill and erica tells her well he killed my parents and my best friend but i heard him pretty good too and i think that was erica's way of getting back to the octopus like remember who you're messing with and gabby's like yeah that's good so was he lying erica's like lying about what i heard him say that somebody is coming to kill you and that we might die because you won't run away and erica's like damn that is deep so Erica tells her sometimes the way he likes to hurt people is to tell the truth because sometimes the truth hurts more. Ain't that the truth? So they arrive to the police department. They get out the car. Carter's pissed and Ricky and Carter go way back like chiropractic. So she tries to clean it up like, come on, listen to me. She's like, I don't want to hear none of it. That's what Carter tells her. I don't want to hear none of it. He's under the influence of Charlotte Cutter because he bought that she was a federal agent and that Erica Slaughter is the one killing all these children. So he reads Erica Slaughter her Miranda rights. Anything you say or use may be used in the court of law. You guys know all that. Not that we've been arrested before, but we just seen it on TV and heard about it so many times. And Ricky's like, yo, Carter, we do need to talk about this. And Gabby goes to Erica Slaughter's defense. She didn't kill my family, Carter. Look, says Carter, I don't need any of this. I need to do this job, finish the job. Do you understand? We could talk about this later. So let's go inside. He grabs Erica and I'm going to finish this. Erica gives Ricky and Gabby some last words. Run, get as far away as possible. And Carter's like, don't listen to her. I need statements from the both of you. You're not going anywhere. And Gabby's like, what are you going to do? Arrest us too? Unless I have to, says Carter. And Erica's like, yo, man, I know what's going to happen. You guys do not want to be here when that agent arrives. And Ricky tells Carter one more time, we're only going to be a few blocks away. I already closed down the bar for the week and we can talk there. No, I need you guys to get inside and go in the office. So in the interrogation room, Erica asks for Cutter and they're just looking at her through the other side of the mirror. And Erica tells her, I want to talk to you before the woman gets here. I know you think you're doing the right thing, but you don't understand. She told you guys that she was a federal agent. She's not. You are being so played right now. And that's what Erica wants to remind him. And he knows this is going to be a long night. So he tells Bill to go get some coffee because it's going to be like that. And in this room, in this office, Gabby tells Ricky that Erica's scared. She's scared. I've never seen her this scared before. When she fought the monster, she did not fight scared. She was not scared, but she is so scared right now. I don't know what's freaking her out. And Ricky's like, I don't want to hear nothing about no monster because you saw it and I did it. Remember, adults don't see the monster, only kids do. And Gabby tells Ricky, I know you saw the monster. And Ricky's like, I didn't see anything. Speaking of not seeing anything, she sure as hell saw Cutter coming into the police department. And when they go out to unlock the door, they realize they're locked in because they realize this woman looks scary. She walks into the police department and these officers just look at her like, well, hands on their hip, like a power position. And she has something sinister up her sleeves. 
and that's where we cut off to the panel. Come on, I want to go back to it. So she goes into the interrogation room and she tells Sheriff Thomas, which is actually Carter's his first name, thank you for waiting for me. And he is surprised, like, how the hell did you get in here? Well, the boys up front gave me the key and he thinks something's off, but because of her established credibility as he thought that she was a federal agent, he's gonna let it slide. And she's charming too, as crazy as she is, she is also very charming. Don't be too hard on them, says Cutter. Flash a fancy federal badge and a pretty smile, and a girl can go a long way in this world. So there's Erica Slaughter in the flesh. Carter's like, well, what do we do? Well, we talk to her, silly, and get her to admit to her heinous crimes. Carter's like, well, let me talk to my officers. Nope. Cutter's like, no, she's stalling him. I want, I don't want them doing that. I already had them calling my home office. I don't want to delay this another moment longer. It's important that she knows that this is the end of the road. So Carter, against his better half, lets Cutter in the room, and Erica knows that she is fucked. So when Cutter realizes that, she looks at Erica Slaw like, I know you know that you're fucked, and you know that I know that you're fucked, so we both know that you're... Anyways, you get the gist over here. So Carter's like, I have to get the files of the victim. We should take it from the beginning, so we start with the first murder of tribulation. And Cutter's like, hmm. And just for pleasure, before he can leave the room, she bangs his head on the door. One time, just for good measure. A second time, just for good measure. And a third time, I think this woman enjoys it a little too much. And she looks at Erica, and the dialogue here is really good. And she tells Erica, I've heard of you. There are always little murmurs between the house. The little black man who never listens to her orders. Of course, the dragons never understand, do they? They train us black mass to ignore orders, to be able to make the right calls in the field alone. And then they get so cross when they have to face the consequences of that. And Erica's like, look, I'm not interested in participating in any of this. What? And Erica turns her head away knowing that this is the end of the line for her. You're playing with me and I don't want to be played with. If you're going to kill me, just do it now. Just take care of the monster later. Tie this up in a nice little bow and be done with it. And Cutter's like, I don't like neat little bows. I never have. I like to play with my food and I like a bloodbath and I'm hungry like that. And Erica's just pissed like, get this over with. And Cutter's like, I have to say, I'm disappointed. I knew you wouldn't run, Erica, but I didn't think you let yourself get turned in. I could end the whole thing right now if I wanted to, but that would be boring. I want a little bit more spice. I want this to be a little bit more interesting. I didn't come all the way to the wild, wild west to end it all in a little room in tribulation like that. No way. Can't do that. So she takes the gun in Sheriff Carter's holster, bangs her nose with it, there we go. And you can tell as crazy as she is, not only does she enjoy the pain, but she's also calculated as to why she's doing this. And Erica's like, why are you doing this? And she's like, real easy. Sheriff Thomas is going to have quite the shock. When he wakes up, you knocked him out, taking the cuffs off with his keys, and you run. And those poor officers in the bullpen that I met earlier, well, they did put up a fight, but it wasn't enough against me. She eliminated, and that's why she was stalling. He'll find dear, sweet Charlotte Cutter beaten and cowering in the next interrogation room, banging on the door to be let out. And Erica so I was like, bitch, please, I could just sit here and wait for him to come so I can explain what you did. Oh. You think you're going to do that? But the monster is still out there, Erica Slaughter, isn't it? He's on a murdering spree, just getting more children to die and getting stronger. Are you really going to let that happen? I don't think so, because if you do, then you're going to have to explain the likes of him, the real secrets, the dark secrets of the world that they live in. And you're not going to do that. You're going to save the children. If you weren't going to, you would have left this freaking town already. So this is going to be so much fun, so much better than me torturing that old man, Gary Slaughter. And Erica is pissed about that. And that's, and you know, because that's personal. That's below the belt. That's petty. And she tells Erica, now let the hunt begins. And when Erica realizes she lets out that, <laughs> she knows she's screwed. And keep in mind, you know that mark on the side of her head? That's the mark of trepidation. That mark of trepidation allows adults like her, because she's a monster slayer, to see the monsters that kids see. And because that mark of trepidation is lighting up like that, to me, that goes to let you know that Charlotte Cutter is the true monster, and she is just crazy. So now Erica figures out her next move. And that is the end of this issue of Something is Killing the Children, issue number 28. Which we begin this issue with Bill from Tribulation in New Mexico going to the, you know, New Mexico's version of Starbucks or their independent coffee shop, getting some coffee for the station where he works at. 
Now he flirts with the barista, asking her, you know, what kind of stuff you like. You like spooky stuff? She's like, oh yeah, I love watching horror movies. So he asks her out for the movies, but she kindly rejects him and tells her, if you change your mind, you know where I'm gonna be. He drives back to the police station and upon arriving with the coffee for the crew, well, he gets in and he discovers that it's a bloodbath murder scene and all this emotional crisis and turmoil just picks up and brews and Erica Slaughter sneaks up behind him but this is one of those really cool calculating moments from Erica Slaughter. She tells him, I'm disarming you. And he's just like, okay, you know, at this point, just take it all, I guess. But she tells him, I'm not going to hurt you. I know you're not going to believe me right now. But the British lady with the red hair, she isn't who she seems to be. Whatever agency you think she works for, call them from a line that isn't connected to anybody from this workstation. They won't have any record of a Charlotte Cutter. She's going to have a big story about how I broke free and kill these officers but it's a lie she's playing with all of us and more people are going to die an emotional crisis kicks in for bill he's like okay and erica slider walks away disarms the gun and takes all the clips out i'm going to let you go now carter is in the interrogation room and cutter will be in a closet somewhere with her freaking sob story and bill just cries like i think i peed a little bit erica slider is like look it's okay it's all fucked up and scary and i'm sorry this is happening but go make sure carter your sheriff is okay so erica slaughter goes into the room where gabby and ricky are being held at kicks the door down and tells him we're leaving so erica slaughter tells ricky to cover gabby's eyes and cover your eyes while we walk through the station there's a lot of dead bodies around here and gabby's like man i've seen so many bodies i don't need to close my eyes and erica slaughter's like fine you want to act grown you're going to deal with some grown stuff real quick let's get a move on so they walk out and gabby just sees this she sees death and she asks erica did you kill her did you kill the bad lady no says erica she's winning but we might be able to tip things back in our favor a little bit and she holds cutters told him right there because she notices that backpack from the other end in the building and she figures i'm going to use this to tip the scales in my favor now what could she possibly be doing with that we don't know but in this panel right here we see the house of slaughter all mourning over the death of gary slaughter at the hands of charlotte cutter Cecilia is sitting down on the porch, you know, mourning a little bit, thinking about things, and the dragon comes up to her like, I know something's up, so speak your mind, Cecilia. And she's like, what good would that do? So the dragon tells her, look, resentment breeds miscommunication, and you know very well that we can't afford that right now. And after going some back and forth about not wanting to speak from emotion and this and that, I don't know if that'll make anything better, the dragon tells her, look, it's an emotional day. We were all fond of Big Gary, but if you have something messy to say, this is a good day to say it. Say it now and don't let it fester. So Cecilia lays it all out there. Look, man, I am second guessing our decision to bring in the Cutter Woman. And the dragon's like, ah, yes, understandable. Now have a gummy. Her methods are severe. Yes. But I believe the great house believes her efficacy outweighs the mess she leaves behind. And Cecilia's like, well, she should have allowed us to deal with our own men, not her. Dragon's like, okay, but to what end? Allow our hearts to stay our blades? Meaning our emotions will get in the way of the greater effect here. And Cecilia's like, well, she should have at least informed us that she was going to kill him before she killed him. And Dragon's like, look, it doesn't make us look good, does it? any of this trouble a hunter trying to leave a house that is not unusual and he's referring to erica slaughter but we have no black man suitable to hunt her ourselves that is very unusual it's a weakness we allowed in our house for far too long and cecilia's like look i've set out to fix that i've set out to look for erica slaughter's replacement and dragon's like look time isn't on our side don't be a fool don't fool yourself it will be a decade before we really don't have to rely on the assistance of the butcher shop if i die and the house is too weak to fulfill its duties they will revoke the charter of the house of slaughter and create a new house in america to take our place they've done it before and cecilia's like okay you mean new york dragon continues it's not good that we didn't fully understand the scope of the mess we had on our hands. A retired member of our ruling council, alien and renegade member? That does not look good at all. You need to start thinking like a dragon if you ever hope to take my place, Cecilia. Gary was a fine man. I liked him, but he was sick and would have died in a few short years. Anyway, I love the political maneuvering going on here. Cecilia's emotions taking place, but the dragon has to think about all the political aspects with the house and how all this has all the amplifications on it. Now, 
says the dragon. His death serves our house and our sanction, and it makes us look stronger, not weaker. Erica's death will make us look stronger still. And if she still lives, perhaps that suits us better. And still, like, what are you saying? If Erica dies, it makes us look stronger. But if she manages to take on this cutter room, what the hell are you saying? And the dragon continues. The Grey House knows that Erica is a very dangerous person if you put her in a corner. It also knows it has a problem on their hands with Cutter, a problem they would need to deal with sooner rather than later. So Cecilia asks the dragon, so the order doesn't care which one of them survives? And the dragon's like, well, you know, more or less. But can you imagine in the world which Cutter creates a problem that we cannot contain? A problem that risks the great secret of the order? It wouldn't be the first time she's created this problem though. And it's one our hands will be clean up because we did not choose her to hunt down Erica. Now, if Erica were to eliminate her, protect the secret, we swear her allegiance to our house and take her seat on ruling council, we'd look like a rather strong house then don't you think? And Cecilia's like, wait a minute, hold up, back down, slow down now. You will let her back into the house? You would allow that? Careful, Cecilia. Mind what you said before about speaking from emotion. Don't say something you might regret. And Cecilia's like, I won't sit at the head of a ruling council with her on it. And Dragon, he's once again with this political maneuver, tells her, no, I wouldn't think so. I can't imagine that she would ever vote for you to raise you to the head of the house. All that bad blood. Remember, all votes need to be unanimous, as you know. Cecilia's like, so what are you trying to say here? You want to bring her back? Are you hoping to bring her back? What the fuck are you trying to say, Dragon? Well, she didn't say that, but I want to add that for more dramatic purposes. And Dragon tells her, I've already told you, Cecilia, I'm trying to make you think like a dragon and not just some common monster. If you plan on making a move, make it quickly and deliberately. A dragon does not hesitate. A dragon acts. And, you know, my thing is, I think the dragon still secretly deep down hopes that Erica stay strong and outlasts and outduels Cutter. But what is Cecilia doing? Yeah, I know she's questioning and it's all complex here. Do you want Erica to live? Cutter's a problem. Erica's a problem. Is Cecilia making her move to I don't know but the way that this is gonna go is she tells her team even though the white mask they hunt in groups she tells her team I won't be going back to the house this evening I need to make an unexpected trip and she gives them this specific set of instructions when I arrive to O'Hare Airport I want there to be a first-class ticket in my name as few layovers as possible and as you can manage I'm leaving tonight I don't want this on anyone's radar least of any of the mask and one of the white masks is like I can get this done of course but where are you flying to right into the belly of the beast and that is new mexico and this is one of those issues that is just like gangster it builds attention and it's cool that the dragon and all of them like gary slaughter and the dragon i think he's still fond of erica slaughter as established in the previous issues i believe that was something is killing the children and keep in mind guys we did cover all of something is killing the children if you're behind i don't mind a, a brother does not mind you binge watching now what i think cecilia is planning on doing i I don't know if she's gonna help Erica out, but I don't think she's gonna help Cutter out. But why would she help Erica out? Is this gonna be one of those things where she kind of sabotages Erica and Cutter at the same time? Because what if there's an instance where both of them are out the picture now? Both houses are stronger, and this whole situation just takes care of itself. This is some shit that's about to go down, and I'm all for it. We begin this issue with the massacre at the police station. Sheriff Carter cannot believe what is happening. Deputy Bill, I mean, even though in the previous issue when Erica Slaughter warns him about, hey, none of this is going to seem real, but that Cutter woman, she's not what she seems, so just be on the lookout. And she shows him a little sign of good faith. You got to check out the previous issue to know what I'm talking about. He has his moments. He has his doubts. And Cutter, being a very bright and manipulative person, tells the sheriff, I'm sorry, I wish I had the strength to stop Erica Slaughter from doing all this and Deputy Bill looks at her like mm. and she notices like well you're looking at me strange and he's like well everything I'm looking at right now is a little bit strange right now this is a little bit beyond my wheelhouse he refers back to like backing off but he also has his doubt about it too so you can't blame the brother for that Sheriff Carter asks Cutter is Erica gonna hurt the girl Gabby so Cutter tells her she might try to use her first help her lure a few more targets to their death that's who Erica Slaughter 
is and carter is just like i just don't get it like why would gabby help her erica like after erica murdered her family and then cutter puts her hand on his shoulder like don't worry man those are the sorts of questions that keep me up all night carter sheriff carter tells her i'm going to put an apb on ricky and gabby and erica right away i know ricky very well and i think i know of a few places she might try to hide but in the corner of cutter's eye she notices holy shit where the fuck is my doll did one of you guys touch my doll and everyone's like what sorry and deputy bill's like hey i haven't seen a doll at all can we focus here says sheriff carter no this can't be and you get this raging terrifying moment of just cut her just in this moment right here where she's like i want my dolly her totem and this is a terrifying rage and that is some really good artwork right there meanwhile in the car cutter's totem is messing with gabby like hey you know erica Sauter just killed you all she's like yeah whatever you know i've seen a lot and the doll's like okay well my mistress doesn't like when people take her things she might let you live but now she'll hunt you down and rip you apart you want that and gabby's like yeah fun stuff she's kind of numb to it i mean when you see your family get killed and she's also smart enough to not let the doll manipulate her and erica slaughter's totem octo's like well don't listen to her gabby it's lying no matter what the cutter woman's gonna kill you so it was it doesn't matter that so octo is trying to add some salt to it and gabby's like you know what i don't think i'm gonna listen to either of you so shut up so erica slaughter goes into ricky's bar and they get more ammunition ricky gets the gun and erica's like cool now it's time to play let's go do this thing and before they leave ricky tells erica wait you know you're gonna try to pull what you were saying earlier right you're gonna use gabby to lure the monster and you're gonna try to do it while that lunatic girl is hunting us down right yeah erica's gonna be nothing but honest with them because she needs him and she is terrified and she has no choice but to be honest with them so ricky tells her i want you to promise me that she'll be okay i want you to promise me that she'll live and erica's like i wish i can then i want you to understand one thing says ricky if anything happens to her if anything happens to gabby i'm gonna kill you myself and erica's like yeah fair enough let's roll so they stop at ricky's uncle's ranch to get away that's the hiding spot that we never knew about and gabby is intrigued that whoa you got horses i didn't know you had horses i thought you were poor or something so backstory here ricky tells gabby that these are not her horses they're her uncle her uncle keeps an eye on things on this ranch and the owner's away a lot so we're here to hide out and gabby tells her well you know what if these horses don't bite because ricky told her that hey don't, these horses are mean not like you because they can bite so gabby tells her look i'm allowed to be mean especially when my family gets eaten by monsters i have every right to be mean now the conversation veers off to gabby saying i'm not scared of dying and ricky's like don't say that gabby you don't know what you're saying it, well it's true says gabby i'm not scared to die well i'm freaking scared to die okay i'm freaking scared and we see the tear in ricky's eyes i don't know what's going on with gabby baby she's gonna be the next monster hunter or it's just because she's numb to the situation of her family being eaten by this monster i don't know that that's what i'm thinking that's my personal take so erica slaughter goes up to them and says hey i think i have everything set up so both of you come inside they go inside and erica slaughter establishes the plan with them and she tells them first of all all you need to understand a few things i think even though telling you puts a target on both of your heads all right and ricky's like it ain't like we ain't got no target anyway yeah i know i figured that much is erica so i'm just gonna tell you anyway so first things first the big secret monsters are real they form out of the raw fear of children and they take shape and they start feeding i used to be part of an organization that is supposed to kill the monsters and keep people safe but they care more about keeping the secret than they care about people and i couldn't live with that any longer and gabby's like so you quit yeah and ricky's like so now they want to kill you yeah they do because they don't like loose ends so that monster that killed your mom gabby your grandma and your sisters is called a duplicate type it is a very scary and very dangerous monster because the monster gets stronger it gets better and it can pretend to be the person which makes it easier to kill more people when it feeds they are fucking hard to kill normally it takes a whole pack of hunters to kill one of these things and ricky gets terrified of this so for right now says erica the two of you are my pack because this monster requires a pack to kill and you two is all i have you are my pack i'm trusting you you guys trust me that cutter woman is here to hunt me not it she wants it to kill again and there's no telling what she'll do to help it or what she has already done all right 
All right. So this panel shifts off to where a couple kids sneak in through the fence onto grounds of this hot springs to where the seniors play. They sneak in just to have like a little adrenaline fill and kids being kids. And even though it's a weird place mentioned by this kid in the yellow shirt, and why are their mirrors broken on the ground? The other kids like, yo, man, the seniors probably like throwing rocks at this place. Or come on, let's let's take off our clothes and go for a swim. So the other kid goes for a swim, and when he goes in for a swim. <laughs> That's a very horrifying image to get a hand out of the water, out of the pool. He screams, he gets out. The other kid's like, we need to call the police. And this other kid notices, yo, Jimmy, man, I don't think we're alone at all. And in this Friday the 13th chasing moment where it's like, ch -ch 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 -ch. you got to watch the 80s movies on that. You'll get the reference there. This duplexer type approaches them. And when it approaches them, it takes form. It's Eric Asar with the big, horrific eye in the midsection right there children as they go in for the kill and that is the end of this final story arc of something is killing the children issue number 30 erica is smart enough to realize that she cannot handle this fight alone i absolutely dug that part and the only way she can have allies is to be honest with them this may cause more problems in the future as further story arcs are established but right now this is her best option and she has no other place to go with it i absolutely dug it and once again i cannot emphasize this any further i cannot wait for this to come out on netflix i really can't but link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry lastly this review is sponsored by coffee because i do these reviews early in the morning before i take my kids to school so if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee link in description or donate to the super thanks but the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to rated comics youtube channel thank you again for watching until next time